And we're live. Hello, everyone. My name is Moshe Nave, and I'm an SAP community advocate. Welcome to today's SAP community call about evolution of integration and how integration can solve your enterprise challenges. Gayathri, please take it away. Hi, everyone. Thanks, Moshe. Hello, and a very warm welcome from my side. As well, my name is Gayathri Narayana. I am one of the senior product managers for SAP Integration Suite and I'm based out of Vancouver, BC. Today, I have the pleasure of hosting two very seasoned integration black belts in this last black belt live session for this year. And I'm very honored to be joined by none other than Betle Belser, who is the CEO of Buco Consulting and one of our very experienced pre-sales integration experts from SAP, Sven Huberti. Detlev has been working in the SAP space for more than 20 years as a consultant. And he has contributed to the success of many strategic integration projects. And he has built a very solid knowledge, both on it on BTP, as well as the SAP integration services, and has worked with very key customers like Henkel and Globus, about which we will be talking today. And joining him is Sven. And Sven has been working both on SAP middleware technologies, as well as with other vendors, and has, again, built a very robust integration knowledge working with public services, SMBs, as well as large corporations. And in today's session, we will be talking to both these experts and understanding a bit about the evolution of integration. Integration has become the new norm and the new essential for most enterprises to succeed. And we understand that as our business grows, the integration challenges rise because our landscape becomes more heterogeneous and there is the need for a seamless integration. So today we will understand about what would be the right fit in terms of an integration uh, tooling and platform, as well as how do we address the diverse integration use cases, styles and patterns, and also understand a little bit about where to use the right uh, toolkit in terms of cloud integration or API management, even driven messaging, so on and so forth. And uh, these two integration experts will talk from there uh, background and integration knowledge, working with different customer projects on how these different use cases can be solved. And to our audience joining on YouTube, welcome. And please post your questions on the chat and we will be more, more than happy to answer them. And we can also deep dive towards the end of the session into some of those questions. And uh, so without further ado, I would like to pass it on to Sven to walk us through the session. Sven, please take it away. Thank you very much. Thanks for the nice introduction. So from our side as well, welcome to this uh, integration black belt talk. Let me show you, first of all, this uh, compulsory disclaimer, which is uh, about, you know, that everything we're going to present may change or not, um, or, or may not be part of any contract, but you get the point. And let's dive actually into the agenda of today. With um, Detlef, we thought about doing a retrospective of, of two. 2022 and the years before, where we did some integration projects together or um, everyone on, on our own. And here's the different things we came up with. So we came up with the idea of talking about integration styles, what we see at our customers, what Detlev is seeing, obviously, in the field at his customers when he's implementing the projects. So we're going to talk a lot about API management, about process integration. We're going to talk about events as well, about data integration, which is kind of the other side of the, the, the event-based integration. And then we're going to broaden up the scope, talking a bit about integration and machine learning, low-code, no-code, you know, stuff that Jürgen Müller has been presenting at the um, SAP TechEd. And generally speaking, how integration is really the, the, the basis for developing business solutions on SAP BTP. So who we are, we already presented that, or uh, it was already presented, so we're not gonna spend too much time on this slide. Let's start by taking this very pragmatic approach um, of talking about integration. What we see at our customers is that they have many different requirements. For instance, they wanna build omnichannel APIs to serve all channels for partners, for customers, for employees. Maybe they want to do or implement integration process chains. Maybe they want to guarantee the delivery of messages through integration. Um, maybe they want to implement system sync with complex logic. 
or maybe straightforward system to system um, um, messages. So they basically want to have a middleware in the middle that does all the monitoring. Sometimes, and this is actually quite often the case, they want to do complex, complex landscape integration with multiple systems, and they send the message to all these different systems. And if we go further down and further down, then we end up at the data integration use cases. So as we can see, there are many integration types and integration styles that we're facing, Detlef and myself, on our daily, in our daily work. Um, so at the end of the day, integration is really heterogeneous. So uh, we talked about this. It can get really complex. But the good thing is there is a solution to that. There is a way to solve this heterogeneous uh, problem with a method. It's called integration solution advisory methodology. So if you're a bit familiar with SAP integration technologies, you may have heard of it. You may even, as many customers, um, you may even be using this methodology. What you may not know, because it's quite recent, is that we also have a tooling. We have a capability within our SAP integration suite, which lets you implement that methodology. So what our customers used to do before is they use PowerPoints or Excel or Word to implement that methodology. And now we actually have a service that lets you um, implement integration along this methodology. And the best way actually to, to learn more about this is to go into the Discovery Center. And I put the QR code here, so maybe you can scan it with your phone or you can use the link. So we're gonna uh, share the slides later on to go to this mission and then you can implement um, different uh, aspects of this um, capability of the integration suite. So one of the pillars of integration are APIs. So this is something that is also part of this uh, integration solution advisory methodology. But what I see is that APIs are used quite often also for application development, be it low code or pro code or no code. And this is especially true when we're talking about B2C uh, use cases like retailers. So let's have a look at an example. And, and this example is about Globus and how actually Globus has been leveraging an API first strategy. And this was actually supported by Detlef's work. So maybe Detlef, can you tell us a bit more about this uh, strategy that, that Globus, this retailer has been following up um, or implementing over the past three to four years, please? Yes, sure. Hello, everybody. Yes. Um, actually, yeah, if we, um, at Globus, we, um, implemented um, an API first strategy. And um, if we go to the next slide, we, we um, can actually see um, that was, back then it was presented in 2018 already um, at the tech ad there. And we, um, we, we needed to um, support our, our you know, customer programs with APIs. And we, you know, we, we sat together and, 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 and defined or API first strategy basically. And um, the the um, why why do we need it? That's that's very important. So if we if you look at the different IT um, departments that we have at, at Globus, for example, it um, you can see I mean, if you go to the next slide what what the problem was to and what we had to solve. On the one hand we had the you know the original enterprise IT which is you know, the, the SAP backend systems and they need to be very stable and slow. Um, and they, they, they had to, um, yeah, they have to be efficient and, and cost efficient, yeah. Um, on the other side, we had, we had, we call it the customer IT. Um, those are the people who do the apps and the websites and all that. And they're very agile. They, they need to move very fast and everything is on demand. And those two worlds, um, I think Gartner called it the, the bimodal IT world. Um, they need to be um, brought together. And that's that's what the API strategy did actually. So we we um, we had a API first, and then we used the API management to get uh, to bring those the things together. And um, maybe if you go to the next slide, we um, we can show you what it looks like actually. So this is this is sort of the architecture 
that be that be implemented. On the left side, you see the customer um, with the different touch points that that they use: the mobile app, the web, the kiosk systems, and other in-store um, touch points they have. Um, and as you can see, see here, if you go to see the green arrow that goes from that touch point to API management, and all those, um, and they will connect to different, um, you know, CM system on on premise, and um, 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 SAP marketing systems, and also we have in the cloud we have services that we use, and it's all sort of the customer is identified by the customer data cloud on. Um, it used to be geekier back then, and um, all those channels use the same APIs, and all those channels for the customers use the same security things using um, uh, CDC. And so we we don't have to do it twice for different touch points. It's it's done once, and um, they all get the, the same APIs. And be that was actually yeah, then presented on a tech ad, and of course since then. Um, things things move quite a bit, but um, maybe if you if you to get a more impression how how those how those APIs actually um, are used on the on the different touch points or channels as we call them, you can see here on the left side that's the Clovis app, and you can see here the um, your it's, well it's in German but it's the loyalty points that you can collect, and it's all the same across the different channels. Um, in the middle, you have the in-store um, screens and touch screens you can use, and of course the website itself. And there's we have a shopping list which is across the channels. You can it's very nice. You can at home you just use the website and then you add add your products and then you take your your mobile phone and go in store and you see your shopping list. We um we have market informations. We have, um and, and and more. So it's it actually mm -hmm. by. By 2022, um, it grew very large. And um, yeah, here's another good example of you API. Um, this this is the um, the gas prices in, in the, the gas stations in uh, at Globo. So that's also very these days very important to know what uh, how much you're going to be paying for your for your gas. It is. Um, yeah, so, so, that's... so 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 Detlef, if 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 I if I sum it up, basically what you did, APIs was a driver or was the technical solution to actually decouple this this old uh, on-premises world from this really fast and agile, let's say, engagement points for customers uh, where they want to have their loyalty points on an app or in a kiosk, et cetera. So it's really a technological solution to enable this this decoupling, right? Correct. That's that's what it did. So it helped us basically um, you know, to... to... Have a layer between those mm -hmm. um, older systems and the newer in innovation styles, you know that 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 Globus were came, came up, you know the apps and the websites and many more that that were used. So, yes. so uh, that that's actually a, a good blueprint, and it's something that that has been seen in the industries and in other industries as well that working perfectly fine because you. You can keep your old systems who run stable, but of the, on the other side, you, you're getting really agile and, and, and really modern thanks to APIs. Is Did you reuse that blueprint for, for other parts of the enterprise and not just for customers? Yes, um, of course. We did that at Globus um, very intensively. Um, so besides going having more stuff for the customer, which we did quite a bit, we also looked at the different um, domains. For example, the supplier or the employee. So we at Globus, we gave it a name. We called it the, the engagement platforms. And so we had the customer engagement platform. We had the supplier engagement platform and the employee engagement platform. And they all use the same basic architecture. Some things, are, of course, are different. The employee doesn't use CDC, but we have the Asia AD to identify the employee yeah. when he logs in. But the the overall technologies and the the architecture they stay the same. Of course, the, yeah, the backend system changed, but everything else is the same. So we have this omnichannel architecture blueprint. We put it to use in all those different domains. Cool, that's 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 really cool. Um, however, I'm seeing APIs everywhere, and and APIs are used quite a lot for you know interactions when you need a product price, when you need information about the market. Um, maybe when you want to start a transaction, but then talking about transaction, API management is not that good at, at, at 
a, a, how do you say configuring transaction who who actually need maybe connectivity to other to backend systems who need to to do data massage data transformation um can you talk more about the difference between api management and a real you know not a real but an integration platform yeah so you know the the um, integration suite of course has many more things for example the cloud integration and so um Yes, we, we need both. So the the, the mm -hmm. there is for for the um you know things that you need APIs for you use API management and it gives you very developer centric things. So you can the developer have the open API specification. You can control the traffic, which is very important. Um, if you have backend systems um, on premises which maybe don't scale, you have analytics so you see what's going on. On the other side, you have you have the need for um, connectivity to different systems and, and, and protocols, which may not be supported by API management. Mm -hmm. um, you, you might have um, quite a bit of orchestration to do, which is also better probably handled in the cloud integration. And when you have, you know, data transformations, which are very complex and 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 um, difficult to do, also cloud integration has a much better tooling for that. So it has that, and also. Um, what cloud equation gives you is basically it's like um, you can handle something like fire and forget. So API management takes maybe an order and mm -hmm. and um, API says, okay, I got it. Thank you, um, dear user. Um, I'm going to take care of it. But to really take care of it, you have to move it to, to the equation part of it because they can they can have a data store, they can resend, and they can really make sure it's it's delivered. So that's important. That kind of reminds me of, of a former colleague who talked uh, about API management being the the bouncer at the entry of the club saying, hey, you can't get in there because we already have like 500 guys uh, dancing on the dance floor or maybe your shoes are not the, the right shoes. So it's really standing in front of your backend systems and maybe your backend system, as you said, don't talk REST API. So you need some integration, which will do all the translation. Do you have any example actually of, of, of how API management and integration really work close together? Yes, um, of, of course. Um, another customer, um, Henkel, um, they um, actually presented this at the uh, big, um, in, in spring at the DSAG technology target. Um, right. And it was Sven, Sven Schweden, Mirko Pfizer, and me you know, um, showing how we use the uh, integration suite um, sort of to API the backends, and this was about supporting the e-shops at Henkel. So there's not just one shop; they have many, many shops to, you know, for for trying out different products and doing things. And they needed to access the ERP backend system to create the order in the, in the SAP backend system. Of course, um, that's not so easily done. Um, and the the front end or the shop developers, then they they like to have a nice API, yeah. you know, JSON type. Um, or JSON style, they like open API specification, and that's where we used API management. So we we had a nice streamlined, and it's very orchestrated and and reusable. So we we could you know have different shops um, use the same API, and you know yeah. you can create orders, delete orders, dispatch orders, all those little things. The problem, however, was um, that the ECC back then. The the um, the function model that we supposed to use was only available as an RFC. Uh -huh. um, so not even OData or web service or anything. Not to speak. About, we don't want to speak about you know JSON APIs. And the um, the thing is that API management can actually not do RFC. So and of course, just as we talked before, an order needs to be delivered. So what we did, we we used the cloud integration. So we transformed that. That JSON uh, REST API call into XML, gave it to cloud integration, which then called, which they have adapters for um, the, the RFC function model going through the, you know, of course, the, the cloud connector um, part of it, and then place the order. And so um, Cool. So, so basically, this is what we just talked about, right? API management is there to describe all the APIs. Uh, it's also there sitting as a as a bouncer saying well we have enough or too much request to the backend system and if the request eventually goes 
through API management, then it gets transformed, data massaged, etc. goes back to the backend system and the answer comes back, right? So a, a perfect example actually of how API management and, and cloud integration work together. Now, one thing though, you talked about web shops. So you really don't want your web shop to go down, um, especially like on Black Friday or things like this. So that kind of brings me to the resilience point. That's an, a really important topic. How would you actually implement resilience? Or is it even possible to implement resilience for pure API calls who, who usually are synchronous? Yes, um, that, that's a good point. Yeah, there. And the, we did this at, um, at Globus. And uh, we introduced um, um, uh, at Globus a, a customer loyalty pr um, program mm -hmm. um, from an external provider that needed to be um, um, yeah, connected to the to the Globus uh, uh, cashier re registers. And, mm -hmm. and um, so to collect points when you do your purchase in, in, in store, you would present your card. Mm -hmm. And then um, we have to do some uh, you know, some magic there to to make sure that the, the customer gets his points and uh, maybe he has some vouchers he also likes to uh, use for his um, purchase and 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 the the cash register needs to get back the receipt tax so you collected um, maybe two thousand points you know and um, that needs to be on the receipt so okay, that one. that is where we use API management and. So we, we we do a call. Um, actually, we do multiple calls. The um, to the first the, the loyalty provider. Then also we ha we had um, um, you know uh, APIs or you know, microservices in the BTP to to do the voucher things and that all the things that we needed. And, and we did logging, so we logged what happened. So yeah. And in this example, just to show you the resilience part of it, um, it's important to understand the. The cash register doesn't wait forever. So, um, in a store, everything has to go fast, and within three to four seconds, they need an answer. If you don't get an answer in that time, it will not listen anymore and just continue. And in this case, it's to to go through this example, if this would happen for whatever reason, the uh, receipt is still always transferred to the SAP card system, which is. Is collecting all the receipts from all the stores, making sure that the financials is okay and everything is booked correctly. And whenever a card number would be present in, in that receipt, um, the card will ask, again, API management, hey, did you see this call? Did you did you book the, um, the points already? And if not, please um, do it now. So in, in, in this case where it, it failed, maybe we would still get the second call from from Zopcar and we would rebook the points so the customer never loses points and of course the vouchers are handled and everything so we keep everything in in order so to speak and it's very it's important to do this because it's not just one or two calls it's millions of calls and if something goes wrong to fix it by hand is almost impossible it's, it will take forever and so this is a built-in process of resilience that we have okay that's cool i mean um i know api management a little bit and um it's it's like a framework api management is like a framework where you can put the different policies and and so basically you use that framework to to build in your resilience based on sap car which is then checking again whatever you built in in this framework to see if it's all in sync okay okay i got it that's cool um but then you, you were also saying uh, three seconds maximum the cash register then stops the transaction. I mean, there's not just one cash register, obviously. There's maybe 10 per shop, and I don't know how many shops Globus has, maybe 1,000, 5,000. So I guess it's quite a lot of uh, API calls against the backend, but also especially against API management. So what about scalability? How do you cope with that? Yes, and that's where, this this case, we use API management. Um, just to give you an example how API management scales, um, here you see a graph, um, mm. and you see the the peak. The peak is one million calls per hour, which went through. Right. And this was the day we actually went live with the loyalty program, and the the people liked it so much. They you know they were in the store. There were many more people than usual, and it was really 
chaotic and uh, um, and it was a huge success. And and um, API management helped us to to sort of cope with that unexpected success. Sort of we we were looking at you know before we went live, it's like oh, maybe two three hundred calls per hour. We probably get that, but now we suddenly we got a million. And those are only those who went through. We got another three four hundred thousand which didn't go through. And now you could ask, okay, hey, but they didn't go through. Yeah, that's some that's happened because we put in um, quotas for the backends. So um, we didn't overload our backends mm. that protected them. And uh, that's a good thing. So yeah, maybe you didn't see your points if you opened your app, but um, at, at least the systems were still working so people could work with it. And that's very important. So if success is a good thing, but only if you can handle it. And yeah. Uh, API management, um, as I always say, it scales to infinity. You know? um, and it was uh, it helped us sort of to have success. Otherwise, if he if he you know if he had more bad calls, nothing or the system went down, then we would have um, had chaos and nothing would have worked. So basically, API management worked as design as a bouncer, saying, "Well, there's too many uh, guys in the club already, and the club already, you can't get in anymore, and, and we cut it out there." Yeah. this is how it's meant to work so it's 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 perfect okay i'm just thinking about these um all these vouchers and and you know you pay and you get points for paying um so that actually brings me to some some ideas um maybe i can get some points and get some money um unless api management really secures everything so how, how do you cope actually with security in this kind of very critical scenarios when it's all about money do you have any example yeah, so, of this? Yeah, so yeah, of course, um, at, at Globus, this is very secure and uh, we put uh, all kinds of measures in here. And we had it, uh, of course, externally tested by by the, the good hackers um, and made sure that they that they, they could get in. Um, and um, API management gives you all that, 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 uh, that, that drinks. And here's an example from another customer class, which is they do they produce big uh, harvester machines and they're in that sort of agricultural space. And they had, a, had another um, sort of problem that, that we had to solve. Um, they have sales partners and their sales partners, and they're heavily rely on those sales partners because most of their business goes through the sales partners. They don't, you know, they don't have the shops uh, for selling those big harvester machines for a couple of million euros. Um, they need the partners who, who, okay. um, who sell them to the actual customer. And those partners, they, they usually have their own system. And, but also the, 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 the um, sales partner users, they have a user in at class to, to look at the machine data maybe, or spare mm -hmm. parts and all those things. And now we had the problem that we um, had to sort of um, allow the partner system to talk to the class system, backend system. Mm -hmm. And, um, we try to achieve this the best the best possible way would have been of course to establish trust trust between the sales partner IDP and the class IDP but that wasn't um, something the class wanted so we had to find another solution for this and what in, and in this case what we did is when whenever the the dealer management system would need to access the SAP system of class the, the dealer system would pull up in, um, uh, you know, uh, a screen where you can enter your class user credentials. And with that, we would do the call. Um, you can see here in step four, we, we, with that, we would get the, the um, JSON web token from, from the BTP of class. You know, um, we do the authentication and with that API key and that token, we would go to API management. And now here's another, big strength of API management, we do security mediation. So we have this token and the key, and then we, we convert that into a SSO style um, log on to the SAP class system, because we knew what user it was as part of the token. And then he could access um, the data he's actually entitled to. Um, of course, you don't wanna have people access other people's data. So we have to make sure it's, it's only the data he should mm -hmm. be seeing. And this is done because the user has has the rights and set up you know authorizations in the SAP backend system to see only his data. So the the, the actual security comes from the class SAP backend system, but we have to pass the user to make it work. And this is a scenario um, that we had, and this is another good good point where we can do all kinds of security things 
um, with using API management. Yeah. So I, I actually love that picture, not because it's so complex, uh, in contrary, but I love it because I, I see two things here. First of all, I see this a bit legacy world with X509 certificates with um, maybe SAML tokens. I'm not sure about what exactly is being used here. And on the other side, we have this API key and Java web tokens. So this very modern world, this very cloud world, and it shows two things in my opinion. So really security mediation, thanks to API management, but also again, this decoupling from older systems that may be not aware at all what is happening in the outside world. And this, let's let's call it this partner ecosystem, which seems to be pretty modern. So I, I love this slide in, in that regards. And always, of course, we have we have something like the quotas and all those protection things built in so we don't overload the class systems and you know. Um, that's always part of the API management implementation that we have. So, yeah, yeah, that's a good point. But what what else did you actually do with with this API management at class? Well, if you if you maybe go to the next slide, we can we can see here. Um, in general, we um, because class is heavily relying on, on on their sales partners, and we need to integrate them. Um, we used API management in, to to mitigate those security risks, making mm -hmm. sure that we, of course, get the SSO, but also uh, mitigate other risks. We don't want to have point-to-point -point communication between all. Imagine all the dealers connecting point-to-point -to, -point to that class backend system that would be unmanageable, basically. So now we we can we can manage this, and we have a central monitoring now. We get, we know who what dealer is accessing, um, uh, or how much dealers are accessing your systems, and and we can reuse the APIs for all the dealers. Yeah. There's no there's no thing there's no programming for every dealer something you know, new, you know, which much sometimes happens. Then. Yeah, that kind of rings a bell, like uh, this engagement platform you talked about uh, before, that you could reuse these APIs to build whatever um, tools, whatever portals you want for, for the partners. Pretty cool. Uh, you also actually just talked about point-to-point -point communication. So it's, it's pretty funny. This year, I heard quite a lot of customers talking about point-to-point -point integration. Which, which sounds a bit weird at first because you have a, an integration platform to avoid point-to-point -point communication, but then customers start talking about point-to-point -point integration. Um, basically, these customers had so many systems talking to not only one, but sometimes three integration platforms that it was really getting messy, pretty ugly. Um, have you have you faced that too, that issue of point-to-point uh, -point integration? And how, what, what is your thought about this? Yes, actually, we, yeah, we we have this. We, we got to this point now at um, at Globus where we have very complex integration scenarios. And it, it, for you know, when you look on the left side, so we have API management and cloud integration, and we connect to all kinds of systems. We have CDC, Subcar, we have the of course the POSIS, the point of sale machines. We have Mazes. We have all APIs. You know, all kinds, and. Of course, the there's a process behind it. So you have to the integration flows. They they have to do certain things in a certain way and in a certain order. And um, every time you add more capabilities, things become more complicated, and your integration flows become even more complicated. And now we got to a point where we said, okay, what are we going to do about this? It's going to be very hard to to expand even more. And then we, of course, we we took a look at the events, which are the natural um solution for this um and so we take the complexity from this integration flows and try to move or you know decouple this a little bit mm. using event mesh and of course the, the complexity is still there it's not it's not gone you know complexity is complexity it's not it's not moving away it's just handled differently mm. and that's what we that we um we, we're talking about it right now so to to um how, how could we use events to to make those integration flows easier? And okay. um, of course, you still have dependencies, and you have to make sure that you know how they, how your event queues, how they how they are managed, and um, but this will help you um, to handle that complexity. So yeah, so so it's really about decoupling integration again, where you say, okay, I have all these event sources, event consumers, and instead of doing, I don't know, five integration flows or one complex integration mm -hmm. flow that will distribute it, you actually are using events. Something has happened. Now, integration layer, do whatever you need to do. Yeah, somebody do something. Yeah. Um, 
we talk about this, you know, um, when you, right now, you could look at your education flow, you know what's happening, you know, you can see, okay, this system is called, this system is called, if you use the event queues, this is sort of lost, so you're never sure who's going to do something, but, but it gives you more freedoms to, 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 um, to do different things and, and still sort of keep, keep um, the, the single complexity of that implementation hmm. um, in check, you know. That's, yeah. um, so you have to move to this sort of integration style to if you get a really complex uh, integration landscape. Yeah, maybe also um, the high number of, of, of changes. This is also something I see at customers when they have, for instance, you know, tracking information every minute, they get the position of a, of a, uh, of a box um, and they have five billion boxes all over the world so you can imagine how, how much that would be but we're less in that situation here at, at globus i guess now we just talked about like small events small pieces of information being sent and a lot of them um we we sometimes also need to to think more about bigger um bigger amounts of data. Have you worked more in that data integration space? We talked at the very beginning. So we said that different integration sites. Have you worked also with customers on, on data integration projects you, you would talk about? Yes, so there's, there's another good example at, at Henkel for this um, thing. So we, um, we we were facing the problem that we, that, that, that we had to access the um, backend systems um, and, and, and over again, over again, and doing the same thing and um, to sort of um, um, not overload the backend systems and, and having a you know unique or you know, common data structure of it, we used data integration. So we replicating um, backend data to the um, HANA cloud on BTP using the smart um, data integration. Mm -hmm. um, so you have different agents that, that will collect the data and, and push it to the, to the HANA cloud. On, on there, you could use different integrations. Um, I, I don't know, I'm not sure if I want to JDBC if that really is an integration, but yes, you can access the data. Um, what we actually at Tenko did is, um, or the data provisioning team, which implemented all this, they provide um, SAP CUP REST services. And now this is where, where we did the integration. Then we, we use those CAP services to provide all the projects which previously were just accessing the backend all on their own and overloading it basically, um, we, we use an API management to, to wrap those services and, and expose it to every project. And so this is how we how we um, sort of got the load away from the backend system and moved it to the cloud where we have much more scalability. Okay, so basically you, you also uh, reduced the strain on the backend systems by consolidating and and uh, certainly also adapting the views within the, the in-memory in database HANA Cloud, right? That's correct. That's what yeah. we use. And this is this is a great use case, you know, um, and um, now we, since it's in the cloud already, we, we have we could use other scenarios where we actually move the data to different systems easily, which was, was not easily done, you know, accessing the ECC system. Yeah, okay. That's cool. That can, kind of reminded me of, of a of the digital integration hub pattern that we've seen over the last years as well, where you, you, you're you using an in-memory database to provide um, access and fast access to data that, that may be buried somewhere in your on-premises systems. Um, and maybe at this point, uh, I would like to talk about this, um, the fact that, you know, if you look at this, and kudo to my colleague who's been developing this. If you look at this application that is running on an iPad, and maybe it could be running wherever outside of the the IT of of a of a big corporation. If you look at this, then then you realize you still need to have access to that data in a modern way, right? Um, and the way that you can use these tools, these low-code tools, these cap tools, these no-code or pro-code tools is only if you're having modern interfaces. And, and one way to provide these modern interfaces is to use this business technology platform. So to build this no-code app that, again, a colleague of mine built, um, that wouldn't have been possible without REST APIs, um, which means it wouldn't really have been possible without this integration suite, which lets you build 
these REST APIs, which lets you protect these REST APIs, um, but also document it, but also um, orchestrate calls to different backend systems, right? And also you wouldn't get the benefits of low latency and high throughput if you were all the time trying to connect to your backend systems that are again buried somewhere down um, you, in your um, IT landscape. So this is something I, I like to talk to my customers quite a lot. But there are many other things we, we're discussing with customers. So no code, low code. Again, you heard it from Jürgen. This is something really important in the application development space. But there are many more important things happening in the IT world right now. For instance, we have that topic machine learning, ML, or artificial intelligence. Not sure about the differences, I'm an integration expert, but machine learning or artificial intelligence mean that you are having a model that helps you, for instance, to do fraud detection based on specific parameters. Now, it, it doesn't help to, to have the implementation of such a model somewhere and you can't really use it. What you want to do is really infuse that machine learning capability into your business processes. And this is exactly what the BTP also lets you do because Kuma Runtime is running that model on BTP and you can access it through REST APIs, for instance, within an integration suite process or wherever you actually want to, um, to use it. But in this case, an integration process makes sense because we want, for instance, when someone is ordering something to see if there's maybe something uh, fraudulent about this request. And, and this blog was actually written, written by, by a colleague. I, I put the link to this blog here as well. So you can see how, how it's working together, integration suite and Kuma or integration suite and basically machine learning. Um, generally speaking, what I see at customers is BTP is not really limited to, to integration or machine learning. It's, it's really helping customers to build business solutions um, in a broader perspective. So you can build workflows to, to attain process automation. So when you have people wanting to, for instance, approve stuff, then you build an application and you add process automation. So some things can be automated or you need approval. You use, um, you use BTP to build this process automation. Sometimes within your integration flow, you may want to route your, your, your flow based on a specific decision that you have not within your integration flow, but outside of it. So you can use business rules. We talked about application development as well in a no-code, low-code fashion or in a pro-code fashion, you can do this as well. And then you may be, again, reusing business rules, which are then the same than in an integration flow. What I see quite a lot also are S4HANA side-by-side -side developments, which means that you're actually doing uh, an extension or you, you're adding capabilities to your S4HANA um, system, but you do this in the BTP. We talked about machine learning, but actually the common thing about all these is you will need integration at some point in time. We will need to provide REST APIs. You will maybe need to provide orchestration at some point. You maybe uh, will need to um, you know, provide also business partner management. So integration is really one of the foundational services of the BTP. And I don't know, Detlef, maybe you, you have some more examples, yeah. and ideas um, of that. We just, uh, you know, talking about Henkel, we used that just that. We had business rules for routing. Mm -hmm. And I was, um, integration is because, you know, you can, if you see all those demos, you often don't have integration suite in it. But if you do operations actually on it and you do it over a longer time, this is what you actually want to have. You want to, you don't want to have those point to point connections. You want to, make sure that you can manage all this. And that's, that's why integration is so important and the integration suite that gives you that capability. Great. We are almost at the end of this presentation. So I would like to thank you very much, Detlef, for your help, for your support, for all your insights. And also thank you very much to the customers who agreed on, on providing these insights into their projects. And with this, I would like to... Um, to give back to you and uh, to open to uh, some questions in the chat, maybe. 
Thank you so much, Sven and uh, Detlev. I think these were fantastic customer examples. I learned a lot today as you uh, went deeper into these three use cases from Globus, Henkel, and Class and explained exactly where API management was used, where cloud integration was used in tandem with API management, so on and so forth. So this was a, a lot of good learning for me. I, and I think this is exactly what we want to do with these integration black belt live sessions, where we want to bring in experts like yourself and talk about best practices and the usage of our mm -hmm. tools and where it suits those uh, customer integration journeys right, by bringing in those uh, examples. Another thing which I really liked was you focused on the three main uh, top of mind things for customers when they embark on integration journeys. One is security, resilience, and scalability, right? And addressing this, I had one or two questions which I would like to uh, begin with um, and, and ask both of you. Um, you mentioned about the Globus use case where you said API acts as a gateway to modernize these systems, these legacy systems. And I've seen a lot of customers also do the same. They have these backend uh, ERP systems and they use API management to modernize this and build applications, mo mobile applications as well to expose this to their customers for usage and things like that, which is a great example. I wanted to understand if uh, in terms of scalability, you mentioned that API management worked well in, in these use cases, but when you modernize these backend systems by APIing it, does the scalability improve or is there some challenges you've seen generally in terms of uh, scalability of API management used uh, to modernize these legacy systems? Well, maybe, um, yeah, so of course, API management will give you that scalability. Um, of course, your backend systems won't scale with it, of course, you cannot handle the same load, but you can protect them. That's very important. So even if you if you cannot handle the, the total load that you might get, you still make make sure that the backends are protected and not going down from the all, all the requests. That's important. We had this example where we moved the data at Henkel, you know, to to the um, to the um, HANA database. And this will decouple that. So you 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 can access the data and this will scale also very good. Um, the ICP cap server. So you can, yes, you can do this um, using uh, integration suite in ZBTP very easily. Yes. And, and maybe to, just to add to Detlef's response, a fun, funny story from, from my customer engagement. Sometimes customers ask us, hey, we would like to do a load test on API management. And, and usually we never do this because they see that they can't provide any backend system that will scale the way API management will scale. So there's actually, it's it's a non-question. Um, will API management scale? It will scale to infinity. And, and for sure, one of your backend systems will die before API management dies. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Thanks, thanks, Sven and Butler. I think that that uh, very well answered my, <clears throat> my question and also gave me a good understanding of what is the limiting factor in such, a, such an architecture, right? Then um, uh, another area which I wanted to understand was in terms of the connectivity options, right? I mean, cloud integration has its, its uh, extensive list of connectivity, API management, certain uh, support certain protocols natively. Have when you used both of these together for customer use cases, have you uh, kind of had, um, or can share some examples of which connectivity option you use uh, with cloud integration and API management together, or where you would look at a particular solution based on the uh, connectivity protocols which the customer needs. Well, you know, API management is, is good to use to access backends if the backend support um, or data or web services. So HTTP is basically um, style of communications. Whenever you don't have that, like in our example at Henkel where you only had RFCs and there's many other protocols um, that the cloud integration will support, then it, you have to use the cloud integration. And that's always what we always say, the sub integration suite is, is a big toolbox and you pick your tools on depending on your needs. And there's, if you look at sub cloud integration suite and BTP, you have an unlimited toolbox, basically you can solve all your problems. And yeah, so you, you have to be, you have to be looking at your, you know, what, what can the backends give you? And sometimes it's a, you get you get later something like this or even rest, but often um, you're still in the old world and you need to use cloud integration to to solve your problem. Yeah, and there's actually no golden rule when to use what. So you could do 
if your focus really is on low latency, high throughput, like we saw with Globus, then you may want to go rather with the API management. If your focus is more transaction-based with a lot of orchestration, you may want to go with cloud integration. And there is definitely a little bit of overlap. Um, so hence, they're really complementary. Yeah, mm -hmm. just if, if we consider more than just connectivity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you need to do a lot of mediation and that's where the heavy lifting is, then it probably makes sense to use cloud integration along with API management. Mm -hmm. that makes sense. Okay, so then I would, those were the questions I had. And now let me look at the live chat and see. Uh, we have one question Could we leverage cloud ALM to monitor uh, event management? I think this is a great question. And event based messaging is really emerging as a, as a top topic for us. And we also support now the advanced event mesh with an integration suite. Um, we will not talk too much about that, but maybe that's for another call. But uh, for sure, the support is there. And this will also help you to um, design and manage those kind of scenarios which needs uh, event-based messaging. So uh, with respect to the support of Cloud ALM, no, this is not currently available, but this is something which we are looking into and uh, can be planned in the future, but currently it's, it's, it's not supported. Um, so those were all the questions I had, and um, um, I don't see any more new questions on the live chat. So I think uh, we are pretty much uh, we can we can wrap up the session. So I would like to thank both our speakers, Detlev and Sven, for your time and for sharing these yeah. uh, very good customer examples. Uh, with, with our audience and uh, uh, also to Moshe to give us an opportunity to use the SAP community call to share our learning and engage with uh, our integration enthusiasts out there. And to everyone joining us live today, thank you so much for your time. And as we head into the holiday season, I wish you all a very happy and safe holidays. And uh, thank you so much. And please join and follow our SAP community page on integration suite. The links are shared on chat so that you can know the latest and greatest what's happening in the world of SAP integration. Thank you so much. Wish you a nice rest of the day. Take care and bye-bye. Thank you very much, Gayatri. Thank you everyone for joining the call. The recording and the presentation will be available in the SAP community YouTube channel. Thank you everyone and happy holidays. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.